Welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast with author Sarah F. Hathaway and co-host Chen Gibson. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway and Chen Gibson. Chapter 37. The afternoon sun began to warm the transport as they steadily drove north. Cole shifted uncomfortably, wishing the clouds he saw provided shades for them rather than the mountains in the distance. He was distracted from his misery as Chappie leaned forward. Do you think they're really going to do it? Chappie wondered seriously. Cole knew immediately what he was referring to. He had heard the rumor at the refugee camp, responding, I didn't think they would do a lot of things. The farmers need people to help with the harvest. We have to keep the food supply going, Monroe explained the logic behind the government's recent proposal. But adopting people and families from the camps like slaves? Chappie's eyebrows furrowed with confusion and he shook his head in disbelief. The council hasn't approved anything yet. It's just talk, Cole tried to assure him. They built the walls, Chappie reminded them. And they're going to need people to build more, Monroe added. Cole shrugged, torn between two emotions. On one hand, he felt sorry for the people's lives that were about to be impacted. But on the other, he was still bitter over the theft that had sealed the fate of Peach Springs. He knew his opinion mattered very little in the grand scheme of things. The council would decide the future of the climate refugees. They'll have work and be able to eat. At least they won't be out robbing and killing, he stated coldly. Monroe was surprised by his emotionless response and was a little shocked when Ginger agreed. Like those bastards did to us, she added spitefully. Monroe saw the logic of their argument, telling Chappie, they're right. The best thing for the country to do is focus on maintaining order and rebuilding, or we will all fall into chaos. Chappie shook his head in agreement. The guys were pretty messed up to rob the hand that fed them. The radio on the dash crackled and a voice stated, Sir, we have the warehouse in sight. Charlie team is flanking right and Bravo team is flanking left. Radio when you make contact, Virgis commanded. 10-4, sir. We're all on the same page, right? Yes, sir, Monroe replied. Chappie? Yes, sir. We have orders to fulfill, Chappie agreed. Virgis nodded positively. We'll try to round up people, but more importantly, we need this food. The radio crackled again, but gunfire blared through the vehicle as the voice stated, Sir, we've made contact. Taking heavy fire, sir. Move in with the artillery vehicles, but aim for the fighters. We need that food, Virgis commanded. 10-4, sir, the soldier confirmed. As the gunfire on the radio ended, the sound began echoing through the vehicle. It got louder as they approached the warehouse. The vehicles with artillery weapons were strategically positioned to pin down the opposition. The dust whirled through the air, obscuring Cole's view as Monroe pulled the vehicle to a stop. The men jumped out, taking cover behind the vehicle. Yelling above the noise of gunfire and injured people screaming in pain, Virgis ordered, Ginger, stay here. Monroe, take a team towards the door. Chappie, set up a team to guard this area. Yes, sir, Monroe agreed. He went to the transport that had followed them in and directed six men to join him. Chappie did the same, ordering his men to set up a perimeter in the immediate area. Virgis joined Monroe as they breached the door, but to his relief, the cry from the other side was not one of war, but one of mercy. We surrender. We're out of ammo. We surrender, a large man called, stepping forward with his hands in the air. Monroe poked his head in, stating, Put your weapons down and get on your knees, hands in the air. Get these people secured and the supplies sorted. We're taking half north, and I want it sorted before the federal forces arrive, Cole commanded, knowing time was of the essence. Yes, sir, you heard the man. Get those refugees ready for transport, Monroe ordered his team. As Cole was headed back to the vehicle, Chappie approached. You want me to triage the survivors, he wondered. Cole tried to remain stoic as he shook his head. Chappie returned a curious look. The feds won't waste medical supplies on them, Cole said flatly. So what are we supposed to do? Chappie's voice cracked with disbelief. Wait for the feds to get here. 
At least then you won't have to pull the trigger, Cole replied. He turned and continued walking towards the vehicle. Chappy ran to catch up. You can't be serious, sir. Cole looked at Chappy sharply, explaining, You know it's the truth. If they can't make it on their own power, the feds won't have a use for them. Just keep the area secure. We don't have to mop up here. Cole quickly turned and continued the march toward the vehicle. Chappie stood dumbfounded, listening to the cries for help. Ginger, give me Las Vegas Command Central on the line, Cole directed as he approached the vehicle. Yes, Major Virgis, she responded professionally, distraught from the battle scene she witnessed. She quickly grabbed the receiver, calling into it. Las Vegas, this is Recon Team Juliet Hotel. Come in, Las Vegas Command. This is Vegas Command, the radio voice answered. I have a direct message for Command Central, she stated. Go ahead, the voice directed. Ginger handed the receiver to Cole. Location 616 Delta Gamma Alpha Clear, requesting supply and refugee pickup, Cole stated. Message received, retrieval squads en route, the voice assured him. 10-4, over and out, Cole responded, listening to footsteps approach behind him. As he turned, he saw Monroe awaiting him with a nervous look. Monroe leaned in and whispered, Sir, there's rebel intel all over the office. I've kept the teams out of there. Cole's eyes rolled as he thought about the feds coming to investigate. Burn it. Make it look like an accident, but make sure we don't lose supplies. Tall order, sir. We're going to lose some food. Weighing the value of the food versus keeping militia information secret, Cole directed, burn it. They salvaged what they could before a fire was accidentally set. By the time the feds arrived, it was a pile of ash. Cole didn't stick around long once the exchange of command took place. He didn't want to see what became of the people left to be scooped up into the refugee system. Hello and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. This is episode number 435, season 15, episode 37. Hey, Chin, what's up? Hey, Chin's up, y'all. And we also have Ellen checking in from Australia. Always a welcome guest on the show. Hey, Ellen, how you doing? Hey, good day, y'all. So big news that I have to uh, do for our our uh, our scheduling is that the tentatively, this is what I've heard. I haven't technically been reached out to, but the Patriot Homesteading Conference in Illinois is tentatively canceled at this time, which really sucks. A um, bunch of politics are playing into there. I don't really have the skinny, but, um, you know, just trying to stay up on my schedule and whatnot. And that is the word so far. So I'll keep you updated if there's any um, new news on that. But that's the word that I got this morning. So unfortunately, that just puts us uh, looking forward to prepper camp, which is never a bad thing. <laughs> At all. I, would, I wish we could do like prepper camp like 362 days a year and then life for three <laughs> days. That would be great. <laughs> um, Much better. Next weekend, we're going to do the bin show of uh, what's available for season three right now with the blooper show because season three is completed. We're polishing the putting the finishing touches on it um it should be ready to go before too long i'll give you an air date next week don't have that set yet but it season three is done finished it celebrated a little too much celebrating but uh <laughs> we're good to go all righty so let's jump into uh a uh, little bit of Virgis. this week um well last week we're just got ginger out this week. They're just kind of uh, roaming around. There's this, this uh, place they learn of that has food stores there. Um, they're kind of talking about the possibility of the refugee adoption programs. We're going to go into a little bit of what labor laws look like in a national disaster scenario today. Um, they infiltrate the supply center and... We've got militia evidence everywhere. So, you know, Virgis being the guy that he is, he covers that up so that they can't get found out. 
Yeah. Such burn it. Yeah. Right. And he set it up. Set some, yeah, burn it. Set it on fire. Yeah, we're going to lose some food, but oops. Yep, that, that was my highlight for the week. <laughs> I like that. Burn it. Make it look like whatever the next page is. An accident. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that that's the best way. And what a position to be in, you know, just walking that line. We hear so uh, many things about like, well, they were, you know, they were just doing their job, following orders, doing their job, you know. Um, so this is obviously a little bit more. I mean, if he doesn't do this job, he's going to be in a refugee camp. Right. So. That is, yeah. Yeah. So you're a little bit more like caught. It's not just money. Oh, I could go find a different job. I could do this, that, or the other. Um, well, I, I mean, he's helping keep a chappy and Monroe out, too. I mean, it's not just him. You right. Know? Yeah. Like the, the band of the Three Musketeers are staying, you know, walking that line. Yeah, and then they're about to, you know, make sure that a lot of other people are also able to stay yep. free. So, yeah, definitely a difficult position to be in. That's why it was really fun to expand his character um, yep. in that way. So, well, getting into the national disaster labor laws, this is actually um, one of the topics that I never really thought about before I wrote it. It was just my writing angel came into me and I created the story. And then talking with people who work for government structures like that, who work with Homeland Security, Wondering, like, who told me about these things that that's supposed to be like clearance level stuff? And I'm like, mm -hmm. nobody told me. It just kind of flowed, you know, like that would seem like the logical situation when you have so many people and you need workers. Well, that's just the logical conclusion to pull, right? Right. So that's why this one kind of sticks out at me a little bit. Um, I was actually watching a really cool show on um, how America was made. It's on History Channel. Uh -huh. And they were talking about the Civil War. And they were talking about how the union was able to develop private public partnerships to take mm -hmm. over like telegraph lines, railroad lines, and put the industry behind the war effort. It was really the first time like industry was powered up on an industrial level to support a war effort. And I found that really interesting because, you know, there's kind of like the beginning of everything's done in good intentions, right? Mm -hmm. But in the long run, what becomes of that in the future when, you know, AI is created for good intentions, but where does it go kind of thing? It, it's like the old pa Paul Harvey, the rest of the story is what you need to hear. Yes. It's so you can't just you know, just that little blurb that they they try to you know the 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 headlines on the newspaper isn't enough to make your decision right. It is going to make you feel all warm and squishy, mm, yeah. but but yeah, it's really not. Okay, um, Garden Girl on our chat line has so if you guys aren't on the chat, you should definitely get on the chat. It's very very fun to have you guys in the chat. Um, but Garden Girl has a question for Ellen. Have things been pretty chill in Australia right now? And I don't think she's talking weather. I think she's talking um, as far as what is Australia doing because um, America has been an interesting place to be these days. Um, it, it is definitely heating up here um, in regards to uh, borders again. We had a boat turn up on West, uh, West Australian coast last week first one in a very long time um so typically with change of government here we're very much um two-sided um when the labor government which is your democrats um sort of sort of way of thinking sort of left-leaning um when typically when they are they are in government the these things sort of come start coming forward again so um the borders is becoming an issue um, they are really pushing the uh, green agenda here real bad. Um, I was chatting with the guys before um, we started and um, was saying that the taxes that they're putting putting on the Australian consumer um, will make it a bit too expensive for us to get new cars. Um, there And there's been rather large protests about 
the green agenda um, and people losing their farms to put transmission lines. I was going to ask, are you having any like the yeah. farm uprising? Like uh, what's yeah. happening in Europe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So not yeah. what's happening in Europe. There was a couple of um, protests in front of our parliament house um, protesting it. So what they're doing is forced acquisitions of land for transmission lines. Um, not so much on um, for solar panels and stuff like that yet, but that is coming. I can right? see it coming. Yeah, because they were pushing um, um, big time green agendas. Like Australia wanted to be one of the major miners of like lithium and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, and so having those what, eyesores. Yeah. So this is the this is the big contradiction about this whole thing. So you know massive big coal deposits in australia we do it they're shutting down the coal power power stations um last week started the weekend before last um victoria um there were massive storm came went through knocked down two massive big transmission line towers tripped out the last remaining coal power station in victoria um and there's still people now a week and a bit later still don't have power oh my gosh yeah, I've been seeing yeah. the big so, storms. I've been yeah. watching that. Yeah. So it has been sort of uh, sort of an uprising about that at the moment, but uh, Australian uprising, we last a couple of days and then we go home. So uh, a what... little bit of a uh, tinfoil hat on that note. Um, yep. The Andes Mountains is some, you know, they're, they're beautiful. A um, lot of uh, the forests and whatnot. Um, but that's like what they really want to tap the Andes for uh, the lithium resources there. And yep. OK, so Tim Full hat completely. Um, so how they're doing the laser fires, basically, we saw paradise. We saw what happened over in Maui. So people are like, oh, the same things happen in Chile. So I started looking into it. And lo and behold, these are areas right in like the Andes Mountains where like basically... If you wanted to mine that land and take it over, you want to devalue it as much as possible first, right? So I don't yeah. have any kind of backup to that that theory. It's just like putting the puzzle pieces together and you're like, oh, well, I mean, if you wanted to buy a bunch of land for mining it for lithium, that seems kind yeah. of convenient, you know? And that... So- where the fires yeah, so, are, it, it, that's right through the Andes. I mean, it's prime. That's it. That's that's trippy. Yeah. So they they've really like there's a whole big thing about um, you know shutting down the mining and all this other stuff. So they they don't want us to mine coal. They don't want us to mine iron ore. They don't want us to mine any of the any of the stuff that goes into heavy industrial stuff. But they're quite happy to rip up the land to dig up um rare metals like lithium and and um nickel and whatever else goes in the in the batteries they're quite happy to do that but they're going to stop the other mining from happening <laughs> and um we're down to one steel manufacturer left um they've just cl- over the weekend just closed closed the um the second the second last one and for the um, country that just means so many imports and that's just more expensive yeah. then right yeah. Uh-huh. And, they, they, and you're they, reliant on somebody else. Yes, I yeah. was thinking the same thing. Reliant which is, reliance. It's it's all at this point. We've learned that being reliant on other people for medicine and supplies and stuff is not a good thing. Right. No. At all. So, yeah. So that's one of the the state reasons that they stated for the power uh, for the shutting down is that the power was too expensive. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> But yep. but run electric cars, you know, because obviously you have the grid to sustain that, right? But, no. but where's the big picture? Because what are what are they going to use for power industry? Yeah, I mean, what are they going to use for industry? Metal, right? You need yeah. metal for like everything. <laughs> so they're gonna. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that, that- uh, answering the question. <laughs> so all of this is what really gets me like uh, concerned because the more that they squeeze on the people and the less, you know, oh, you're going to own nothing and be happy about it. Well, when you own nothing 
I, how do you have any say with where you go to work with where what you're you know allotted from your benefactors that's that's scary ground you know and it's yeah. it's been that way in history you know as far as like having different labor classes and really it's like the judeo-christian beliefs that gave us this everybody is created equal but it's so fragile if we don't like protect it it's so fragile and it's just so concerning to see the way that we're going yeah uh, it's, it's it's it is getting very very scary um uh, especially from our our expect our perspective here um that We've executive governance, and even it's the right right leaning side of the government as well, has not put what we need needed into our defence force. And um, you know, when when America uh, asked us to supply a ship to the Gulf to help out in the Gulf of Aden um, with the Houthis, we couldn't supply one. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Um, yeah, because we don't have enough sure. munitions. Yeah, yeah like England had problems them. with that too. They had like no aircraft carriers that were serviceable. Yep. <laughs> wow. On. Yeah. That is not good news. Like on the yeah. on the world front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, is it? Yeah. It's it's just it's scary, and mm-hmm. I just can't wait until I'm out of that, so I don't get called up to go because I know mm-hmm. that I know that one we don't have the resources to be able to do what we need to do and two i know what the enemy has and i don't want to have anything of that jazz <laughs> so, yeah, no lies no lies yeah. so you just need to write a, a a letter that your sister's not allowed to play any silly games yep <laughs> <laughs> Aye. sorry let's go <laughs> yeah so I don't know what exists in Australia as far as like if they declare a national emergency. And I always tease like um, it's a race between our earth and people right now. And it, like it seems like people are like, oh, we're going to World War Three, blah, 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 blah. And then like, well, we're not doing that right this second. But the world is now flooding and we've got disasters everywhere, you know, so it's, a, it's kind of that race. So um, whichever way it happens to fall into a national emergency, everybody's like, oh, what's the big deal? Doug is the one, um, Doug Hogan's the one who introduced me to the executive orders that the United States has in place for this type of event. Um, It started in 1962 with JFK and his, like, if you look it up, I'll I'll link it in my blog. But if you look it up, um, his was like, kind of delicate as far as like yeah we're gonna take control of the manpower but like it's just to make sure it's properly structured to give us like the most efficient way of being agile and being able to handle these um disasters or war type scenario that kind of thing when it comes up so efficient right yeah and agile so of course we have things like the draft which um, there's been a lot of talk on that as far as because they don't have the recruitment numbers. And that's one of the things hurting you too, right, Ellen? As far as like... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. We, um, we're, not, we're not recruiting enough people um, mm. because the job market in Australia is so good. So um, which, put, which puts pressure on the people who are remaining um and yeah it's 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 not good it's not a not a it's not a very good place to be at right now right yeah and that's the same kind of word i've been getting from people involved in our um special forces and whatnot as well is that the recruitment numbers are just not there um nobody wants to fight for the current regime there's there's a a type of personality that that is a warrior right Yep. But then the the atmosphere right now is not conducive to that personality. Yeah. So why would they enlist to get abused? Right. Yeah. As well as the 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 youngsters of today, um, uh, they don't they, want to go to war. They want to play war on their computer. 
<laughs> one, yeah, that's one reason. <laughs> right. But they don't like they don't like authority. They don't like getting told what to do. They don't, mm. and I've I've well, experienced it firsthand. It, it's almost. Can you blame them though? Yeah. Look at yeah. look at the the look at our our leaders. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You know, what, what kind of example? I mean, oh my goodness. Leadership reflects so, attitude. So, yeah. I know when you know, I was growing up, I didn't even have a computer until we were teenagers. And mm-hmm. now these kids today, if they don't have something in their hand from like in, you know, <laughs> in grade school, they're, um, you know, they, they get picked on and all this other stuff. It's like, it's, yeah. Um, and I, I see it. I see it. I've seen it. I've had to deal with them. I've yeah, and that's one of the reasons why, as well, of uh, I'm is going to get out of the military is because of that. Because I just can't deal with them. I lose my yep. temper. <laughs> like <laughs> just do old. You you've signed on a line, but you know, you can't. Yep. And when you bring when you bring them up on this stuff, like when you pick say, hey, this is not the appropriate behaviour. They say, oh, you're bullying. Yeah, you're bullying. Yeah, I'm like, I got. <laughs> Oh, Ellen, we need to swap stories. This I got written cool. up for yeah. just for telling somebody to do their job. Yep. Yep. But and, you did it uh, in a mean way. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, and, that, and, and that's the societal change, right? So, that's, yeah. uh-huh. that's, that is in society now. So, um, if it does go to it, you know, you'd have, especially if with the Australian Navy, if we got told, you know, China was moving on Taiwan and we're sending our fleet up, whatever, um, you'd get three quarters of the people that are supposed to go to sea go and psych themselves off. Right. Luckily, so, that's one problem that China's having, though, too, as well, is they, they nickname it the Little Princes because they had that yes. one child law for so long. And everybody wanted a boy. And so now they have all these spoiled boys that aren't really into going to war, you know. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of a, a good thing, I would say. Um, yeah. And, I, and you read, you read, like, you read, uh, you know, beyond the China and it follow in research and stuff like that. And they've got to move before... They've actually actually got to move before a in before a Pacific date in in the future, otherwise their military is going to be too old. Mm-hmm. Like they are too old because they can't. They they're having the same thing as us mm-hmm. on a much larger scale though that they can't they can't recruit enough people either. Mm-hmm. However, it's a communist country. They'll just yeah they'll just mandate it mandate the labor force. Yeah uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, and that's what was really concerning to me about, like, the refugee crisis that we're experiencing. You know, lots of other countries actually have, like, refugee camps, literally. Um, like, Greece built one that looks like Alcatraz out on this island. It doesn't look like yeah. a very fun place to be. We, we have one in the nation of Nauru. Right, okay, yeah. And um, – um, Syria, they, they all have, I've done a show before on, you know, the different refugee camps and stuff, but, um, you know, in my story, it's like, we have all these people who lose their land and people who don't. So you can't just have people overwhelming people that don't have land anymore and need stuff overwhelming the people that still have it. So you have to find some kind of a balance. Like I didn't write it as a malicious thing, right? I wrote it as like, this is a societal response to a problem that they had to get control over. And it was just as the years ticked on and then you have all these people just sitting there that you could easily put to work. And so you have to develop a system to do that. And uh, it's just, it's a very logical conclusion, like a very logical set of how it would go. Right. It's just because that's what's in the country's best interest, but obviously it's not in like everybody's interest. But if you look at what's happening right now in our country, this is basically the problem. We're going to have so many um, people that are non-natives to the United States. Um, I'm not talking like Native Americans. I'm talking like, you know, just fresh immigrants versus people who are already lived here. That um, if they don't do something about that, 
it's all it's already causing a lot of problems obviously and it's just going to cause a whole bunch more because everybody who's trying to help will only want to help for so long you know till it's like hey i'm working my butt off to pay my taxes and you're getting all this stuff for free right that my taxes keep going up yeah yeah, and New York, New York City is a classic example of that now. So everyone's yep. starting to fight back on their in their sanctuary city. It's like, no, nah, we don't want to no more. <laughs> well, and I right, also because it it finally affected their quality yeah. of life. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to be all high and mighty when it doesn't affect your quality of life directly. And I've also heard that the truckers are going to do a boycott of New York. Yes, I saw, I saw that. So if they're like supplies stop coming and they have a powder keg situation ready to explode. Would they say it was like 70% or something of all goods get trucked into the city? Yes. Something yeah. Like that. And the truckers are like, "Fine, if you're if you're going to pull exactly. that kind of <laughs> yeah." And I mean, I totally understand all the sides of it. It's just like, wow, that that situation is ripe for explosion, you know, if that happens. Because once people aren't eating, then the game all changes again. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be very interesting. And uh, I just hope it never comes to a situation where... Um, you know, there's a, like a class of people who think they're just all that and everybody else should be just working for them. Um, that's uh, goes against the principles that founded this country altogether. But it's easy to see how it would roll in that way. And, uh, you know, a lot of individuals just want to keep their eyes closed about it. And we literally have the executive orders in there to put, you know, your labor on the line that the government can say, Oh no, no, you can do this job. You're going over there. You're going to do that. Um, I mean, Alan, you enlisted for it, so you kind of asked for it, but <laughs> no, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> but, well, uh, you know, young and gung-ho. Young and gung-ho. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Now you're like, uh, no, can I withdraw that please? <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll miss the money. <laughs> yeah. Fair uh, enough. So I have to set myself up before before I yeah, you know, that's that that's that's what I gotta do. I gotta set myself up. Yeah. It doesn't I keep going over to friggin' America all the time though. <laughs> <laughs> well, just just fly into Mexico, walk up to Sarah's house, we'll be all set. Yep, yep. I keep telling her. It's no mm -hmm. problem. Well no. you might have to come in through Arizona now. Uh, uh, well, that's okay. That's uh, fence, fence near San Diego. Well, the Chinese are using. Yeah, I was yeah. reading that actually today. Yeah. Just, just, just give Fletch some gas money. He'll come pick you up. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, my big quote for today was, you know, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, right? Yep. So, yep. I mean, because we have – you want to take care of everybody. It's just like what we talk about when um, it was, it's a long-term survival situation and you have stuff. I mean, that's what we're in, right? And you have stuff, you know, ready to go because you were thinking preparedly. And now like, do you watch these people just kind of uh, freeze to death on the curb, you know, because they didn't think about that. They didn't do that. Or, you know, do you reach out and help? So we're really stuck in this conundrum, I believe, because um, we are founded on Christian values. And so that does lend us to want to help. But then at the same note, you know, you all don't want to get taken advantage of as well, which is. Right. I mean, do you, do you feed 100 people for a day out of your stocks or do you feed your family for 100 days? Yes. You know? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, because everybody has and, one meal and, and they're in the same mean, boat. Are are you evil for for putting aside for you know for right. for doing the thing and putting aside so your family can have food for that long? You know, it's so true. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's just I was I, I was once called selfish. I'm like, you, you that's your opinion. However, um, I'm not going to feed you if you turn up at my door if. The worst does happen. They <laughs> call me selfish then, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like you'll be you'll be getting turned away. I mean, they, um, you have just as much opportunity to prepare now and be ready for those things as anybody else. Yeah, 
and and there's uh, you know especially now that you know things are getting way expensive um and there's a lot more people in australia that are like starting to realize like hey i need to get i need to get stuff put away because you know a mm-hmm. bag of rice is going to be two dollars to two dollars yeah. next week is going to be three or four dollars so yeah. like um, and they're starting. There's in the last probably about last month and a half. There's been so many new people joining the the groups that I'm that I'm in here, asking for advice and all that sort of stuff. It's like, and then um, yeah, it's yeah. You know, um, it's sorry. it's awesome yeah. to have Ellen on because like he like we think it's an American. You know, it's like local that we're like you know prepared and all this other stuff. But it's it's a global it's thing. It's global. I mean, yeah. Yes. Wait, she's she's facing the same struggles as we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent, we are. Because uh, these corporations this. too are, you yep. know, the private public partnerships global. are now global as well. So yes. yeah, yep. we're absolutely all in it together. Yep. So you yeah, know the. Uh, it, all the you know food manufacturers and stuff like that. You know. Mm-hmm. One thing that I thought, you know, was Australian owned, no, it's been bought out uh, by this massive conglomerate that owns virtually everything else. And I'm like, yep. wow, like you finally sold out. Um, so it, one, you just, it's too expensive to manufacture stuff in Australia anymore. So that's why um, there's this, the companies are selling this, the stuff out. And the bit, the massive, the massive thing about us though, is that we don't have land connections. So we can't get everything that we get, has to be brought in by ship or um if it's small by air freight so you just start restricting that by making it more expensive by having mm-hmm. terrorists blocking off a um, major route for container ships that go in you know around yep. the world that starts affecting us we're paying more in transport costs we're main, paying more in fuel tax when if you gas yep. tax everything like that and it's like, there's no wonder people are starting to hit breaking point. There's people who can't afford to pay rent because rent is so expensive here, just everywhere. Yeah. Um, and there's people living out of their cars that 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 have got full time, well paying jobs that they can't afford. To, they can't yeah. get a house for one. Yeah. yeah. And they're living in their cars, and that's just not in America. That's here too. Like. Yeah. Um and. It's this global you know, push. The the, the you yeah. own nothing and be and be happy about it. And so, if everybody owns nothing, okay, then we're gonna exist in a in a you know utopian environment where we just all share everything and it's all communal. No, there's gonna be somebody who like, owns it and allots it to you. Yeah, yeah, because you can't yeah. get rid of human uh, greed. I wish we could. That'd be great. It'd be awesome. But but you can't. It's part of human nature, and you'll always have that. Yeah, and Everyone then they'll decide, like, oh, do you are you even allowed to have that shipped in? Are you, you know, you guys are already kind of yeah. under that gun. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna move to my little little block if I don't if I don't move over to you. Yeah, um, that's what I've been saying. And, and then uh, you know, do the whole friggin' um, uh, what was it called? Uh, the Wolverines. What is it? They block off the town. <laughs> that, that's, oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, I was thinking like, like uh, Escape New York, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but block it. Yeah, it's you seen Jericho. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So block off the little town like that and just have it. You know, patrols and all that sort of stuff. You ain't coming in. Yeah. A big thing that for us is that um for for. But one of the things that we we worry about here is Chinese invasion as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, because we have the resources, we have the resources that they want, and they don't. And because it's not on their home home ground, they don't care if it's a national park. They'll just rip it up. Mm-hmm. They don't care. If it's the Great Barrier Reef. They'll just they'll just go in and rip the whole thing up because it's not their. It's not, it's not theirs. China. They're, right. No, it's not China, homeland China. So, um, that's. That's the concern that most of us have. Is that is that on the big, larger scale? But you know, in the now though, it's the natural disasters that are happening. So floods, right. fires, 
That's why um, I say always the race, mother nature against humanity. Yeah. 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 Who's going to bring it down first? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we have, we have a whole heap of national disasters here, um, which it, you know, we, this, we call them cyclones here because they spin the other way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm used to having some sort of things packed away because you had to be in, in northern Australia because if you got smacked by a cyclone, you could be out of power for two to three weeks yep. and you have to rely on what you put away, um, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, but it, it definitely in the um, – in Australia it's itself, a lot of people are starting to realise that hey, that's this is this is uh this is dangerous. Well, that's good. It's good to have people waking up. Um, I get yeah. I get hits to my podcast. I mean, I have people from all over the world, and it's really amazing to see. You know, I would probably say um, almost a half and half ratio of hits from the United States versus the rest of the of the world. Which is so cool um, to know that, just like Chen said, everybody's in it. You know, everybody's involved. Yeah. And just being prepared is not like an American thing. Um, but it is so foundationally American. And I think that's the big problem with what um, they're trying to do to our society right now is just make us into these, you know, reliant upon the government whelps. And we're a country built on independence and yes, community, yes, working together, but making it for yourself and being able to buy your own homestead and do your own thing and be self-sufficient. And there's a lot of pride in that. And uh, so basically they're just asking us to like just forfeit all that pride and, you know, all that belief in our country and the, the wonderful things that it is and just, you know, kowtow to what the what the world order is and i have a big problem with that one so you know there really should be like a book series done like this little house set out on this big prairie yeah kind of sounds like that kind of lifestyle right right exactly <laughs> <laughs> well in australia honestly you guys aren't much different uh mm -hmm. as far as the independent values go because you're, you know, your ancestors were plopped there and you had yeah. to figure it out, right? And you built yeah, ours got on the boat voluntarily. Theirs were kind of yeah. put on, right? Right. But still you had the the sense of like we're building this, you know, mm -hmm. this place for our for our people. Um Yeah, they, they most of the convicts they only had to do it a year or two years of hard labor and they got their own slice of Australia. So yep. Right. Um and they and they went out and went forth and did what they had to do. Um so yeah, it's it's yeah, that independent sort of thing. But I, I, I think I, I do feel that it is it's getting squeezed out of society a lot a lot mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Um it's you know, amazing how fast the the generational attitudes can turn over. Yeah. So you, uh, if you it, like, if you people like uh, were wanting to put the, have their, uh, what do you call them in America? Uh, nature strip. We call them a nature strip. So it's the part, the, the bit of in front of your house, which is where all the services are, and it's not owned by you. It's oh, okay. owned by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like the right away. Yeah, it's called a nature strip. So it's where you know, the pipes go and all that sort of stuff. Anyways, a lot of a lot of a few people have like said, "All right, we're going to put a submission in so we can make that uh, community garden, or you know, a, as a grow whatever, as people can just go by and pick it." And they've been said, "No, you can't do that. You can't do. That. <laughs> no, you can't. No. You can't rip up your front lawn to make it a veggie patch or whatever because of appearance stuff. It, we don't have HOAs specifically here." It's counts what we call councils, like um, I don't know what they are in America, but um, it, and councils make these rules. Um, are, are they government or are they like self-imposed groups? Yeah, they're government. So that, that's our local government. Uh, sort of yeah, like the mayor of towns, right? But um, so we all have a council, which is which is run by a mayor, but it's not don't they don't have prevalence like they do in America. It's just like a. Um, it, but it's what they call what we call local council, um, and they 
they have just been, you know, um, they control everything like a HOA, but it's it more Yeah, extreme. we had both. When I was in yeah. a subdivision, the city uh-huh. had like a bit of codes and building department. Yeah. The county. That oversaw yeah. stuff. And then we had our own little self-governing, like just yeah. the nanny that was like down the street the wanted to tell you to park <laughs> three cars outside or something. Uh, yeah. So um, we had both of them in the subdivision I lived in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That'd be horrible. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. nice to live on your own land and not have people like, I mean, I still have to deal with government, but it's yeah. not like it was in a subdivision. So I have two massive big trees on my land, uh, on the property that I rent through defence the, through the government. Um, a massive one at the back and the massive one at the front. So that both trees shouldn't have been pa- uh, pl- uh, planted there. They're massive eucalyptus. Um, they're about uh, one of them is about a meter uh, meter round, which is what three to four foot around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I have asked for both of them to remove be removed, but the council said no because they're they're uh, they're they can't be removed because we need trees in our suburbs. It's like, it's, well, it's destroying the fences and God knows what the one out the front is doing to your pipes. Um, no, they've uh, said no. No, can't cut <laughs> like, those. No, we can't cut, no, cut those. Fire down, risk so. on top of that. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. If, I, if we, we get ambers from the, um, from the nature park, which is mm, about one half a mile away, up in a hill, if we get ambers coming, if that goes up um, in a bushfire, if we get ambers and land in that crown of that tree out the front, the yeah. whole street's on. Yeah, eucalyptus yeah. just, whoosh, whoosh, that's hot. Yeah. 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 It's a hot fire, quick burning fire. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. That, and that's the, like, they, they'll tell you you can't cut, cut a tree down where, where it is actually causing damage. They'll say, no, nah. just deal with it. And I'm like, this is just is insane. And and, and then, so well, counter, so counter, like, oh, we care about all this. We care about all that. But then yeah. it always seems to, you know, contradict itself. Or like, yeah. What? What? And then they wonder why people don't want to, you know, sign up and go trust these people. Nope. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. Okay. Let's jump into some changing earth news because we got to get through that before we're done. You going to stick around? Yep. All right. I figured you would. Okay. Hold on here. We're going to play the weather music. All right. So there has been some huge plasma ejections from our sun, but nothing is earth facing. So we get so lucky from the sun it's not even funny um like any one of these plasma ejections cmes whatever could take us out you know and um they just don't seem to come at the earth which is great for us uh but you know how long does that last so i don't know but we got lucky again so it was south it blasted off south it was a huge ejection it's really beautiful if you like to watch that kind of thing um southern california is about to get hit with more rain so that'll be interesting they've been having some really big landslides uh things like that because they're just overwhelmed with rain it's been uh i work in northern california so um we've had some of the fallout from those storms but not heavily but they are getting socked again the other thing is a lot of people down there don't have flood insurance because they have to pay so much for earthquake insurance and flooding is not something you really think about when you're talking about Southern California. So um, it, it's a it's a really rough situation for them down there. Okay, so going back to February 12th, we had 421 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger. Biggest of which was a 6.1 in the Volcano Islands near Japan. In Indonesia, East Java had po- two powerful tornadoes touch down damaging two villages there in the united states alabama experienced flooding they had ponds overflow Um, the roads were actually getting ripped up from that flooding and water movement in northern oman they had flooding submerged the north four people did pass away from that event 200 people had to be rescued and villages were literally being cut off from one another because the amount of flood water 
In the United Arab Immigrants, they had heavy rain and intense hail. Massive damage from this hail happened. Um, strongest hailstorm in 40 years. Uh, but it turns out they were just out cloud seeding for two weeks before that. And so trying to increase the amount of precipitation in that area. And then, you know, lo and behold, it all turned into a gigantic hailstorm. So, um, you know, maybe maybe we don't know as much as we thought we did. And we probably shouldn't be, temp you know, uh messing with the environment so much being that we don't understand what really goes into making that that tick um as i mentioned during the show chile had another mega wildfire light up 200 residents had to be evacuated because of this new fire 520 hectares of land has been lost and five structures have burned down due to that to that new fire on the 13th, there was 384 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.1 in Papua New Guinea. In southern Turkey, they got three months of rain in just 12 hours. Major flooding from that event. One person did pass away. People were literally trapped at home or at work because the rivers or the roads just turned to rivers and, and it happened so fast they couldn't get out of wherever they were. In New Zealand, they had a state of emergency at Christchurch City, 650 hectare fire, um, 80 properties were evacuated. Luckily, only one home was actually lost. Southern Australia, Ellen, your neck of the woods, your East Coast was hit with strong storm, thousands of lightning strikes. I've been really impressed. Um, it's probably impressive for you, but man, you guys get lit up with lightning down there, um, especially when the solar storms are going. It's crazy. Yeah, that's what cause, um, mostly causes the bushfires too. But we haven't, we've had so much rain that the the bushfires haven't been that that of an issue this year. Um, what about Victoria? Um, one couple of fires out there in Victoria Gardens National Park. Yeah, so yeah, it's but not the extent of what it was in twenty twenty. So there's yeah, like fair enough. Fighting, um, but the, yeah, they're they're not the extent of what what we've had previously yeah you go you're gonna always have fires during summer mm -hmm. no matter is it's just uh it's like california extent. yeah 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 that california actually needs those fires to for the environment to do what it's supposed to do so yeah so yeah australian bush is it's it's, it's centuries of evolution right yeah plants get used to having the fires and and half the native vegetation relies on the fires to be able to regenerate yep same, they don't, same they in don't california their, yeah yep. they don't open the pods unless the fire's gone through mm -hmm. so yep. yeah all right on the 14th of february we had 391 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger biggest of which was a 6.0 in the philippine sea by micronesia in southeastern Brazil, they got 70% of their February rainfall in 40 minutes. Created massive flooding, um, ripping up their roads. They had homes and businesses literally filled with mud from the mud going on the move during this event. So that that's mud is way worse than water. Um, you know, it, with water, you're dealing with like... Uh, the molds that could happen afterwards, getting everything dried out. But when it's literally filled with mud, you are digging out. That is just worst case scenario. In Cyprus, they had two tornadoes touch down, unprecedented damage to the city, five homes destroyed, and over 50 homes damaged. Southern Japan, they had the strongest eruption in Sakurajima. They had volcanic lightning, and the nearby villages are going to receive some volcanic ash from that event. In the United States, we got hit in uh, the New England areas with a powerful nor'easter. They had heavy snowfall, power outages due to that. One gentleman did die on a snowmobile. He ran into a downed utility line. On the 14th of February, there was 413 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 6.0 in the central Chilean coast. Iraq saw heavy flooding in Kurdistan. 
northeastern Ecuador saw heaviest rain. Um, they've been getting a ton of rain since the 24th. They have two people dead in that event. Um, massive amounts of flooding and landslides. About 20,000 people affected. 30 homes destroyed. And 30,000 or uh, 3,000 plus homes damaged. On the 16th of February, there was 439 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.2 in Vanuatu. Ontario, Canada got hit with the heavy snowstorm. And then the next day on the 17th, Toronto got hit with a massive snowstorm as well. On the 17th, there was 403 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 4.9 in Vanuatu. The Dominican Republic of Congo has been dealing with the worst flooding in 60 years. They have lost 221 lives. They've got a lot of displaced people and uh, just people have lost everything due to that flooding. So it's a major event down there. Dubai also saw heavy flooding on the 17th. We had a 4.7 earthquake in Fall City, Texas, a 4.0 in Acapulco, Mexico. And then New Jersey was hit with another snowstorm, 10 to 12 inches of snowfall on that day. On the 18th, which is today, so far there's been 356 earthquakes or 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.6 in Tonga. And we have that incoming storm kind of putting its bullseye on Southern California again. As far as volcanoes, we have 28 volcanoes actively erupting on our planet. That's the same as last year or as of last year, as last week. We have 18 that are showing minor activity. That's up one since last week. And we have 31 showing unrest. So we did add one to the list this week. Most of them are erupting in Indonesia, but the ring of fire is really starting to show a lot of unrest. So that's just an eyes on situation. As far as wildfires in the United States, we have zero <coughs> acres reporting, three fires contained, um, and those fires were coming out of North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Texas, but all of those fires have been contained, and they're not reporting any active burning right now. So all in all, pretty, I mean, we've got some mega flooding events, but as far as it goes, um, I would call that a calmer week. The, the earthquake activity is up. That volcano activity is up. We're going to have to keep our eyes on that, but uh, um. A little quieter week than we had in in a while, I would think. So we had to dig a little bit deeper for for news. So that's always a good thing. We could use a minute of calm after the winter and the crazy crazy storms and everything, like the cyclones that have been hitting you guys there in Australia and everything. So you got double whammied there for a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me here though. <laughs> right. Yeah, up north. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's the crazy thing about a hur about the hurricanes too. Like when Sandy came through, um, it was literally like an hour. Well, okay, say two hours from my house, and at my house it was yep. like sunny, nice, nothing going on, and then just two hours away, they're getting absolutely just creamed with this um, hurricane. So, you know, geographically, it can be a very different story from one area to the next. Yeah, and, um, like, we'll get the whole, because I live on the other side of what we call the Great Dividing Range, so it's the massive big mountain range that goes on the east, uh, eastern coast of Australia. So I live on the other side of that. Um, so the coast will get absolutely smacked and we'll leave uh, 42 degree Celsius days. <laughs> like, <laughs> no rain, nothing, and it's like the, yeah. the whole coast area will get, and, and it's like, yeah, we're, we're sweating. We're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're, it was a beautiful day for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, we'll get we'll get smacked and then there's nothing on the coast. It's it's just, yeah, it's funny how um, the mountain ranges can have a really big effect on, on uh, the, the weather. weather patterns. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All righty, guys. Well, like I said, I'll keep you posted on the um, Patriot Conference tentatively right now from what i understand it is not going on so if you made plans to come out there you might want to check that out um check out their website but uh we are going to be doing the blooper show next weekend that's always a lot of fun um definitely jb is going to be here with me we might just do a girls night uh sorry chin but <laughs> you'll, get a, you'll get a week off um 
we might get uh, Mr. TJ Swenson to come hang out with us. So we'll see um, what that looks like. And then uh, we're going to be airing the end of season four of season three pretty soon. And then we're on to the next one. So that's lots of good, good news. Um, always appreciate if you guys support the changing earth. I really, really appreciate that you guys do that for me. If you want to help out and become a supporter, go to changingearthseries.com. That's changingearthseries.com. And you're going to find all the podcasts over there, tons of learning material, <clears throat> um, the audio drama, all the novels, all, all the goodies. Everything about the changing earth is over there, changingearthseries.com. All right, guys, I'll see you next week for that big event. Thank you, Ellen, so much for coming on the show. You know you're always welcome whenever you get a day off. We'd love to have you here with us. So appreciate no that. Yeah, appreciate you. And, of course, Chen, thank you for hanging out with me on Sunday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you can go finish tractor work or whatever you're working on today. <laughs> that was fun hanging out with Ellen this evening. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good time. Last night, she's like, uh, what about tomorrow? I'm like, what happens tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face is like, what? <laughs> what? What am I doing? <laughs> ah, yes. Sarah at her finest. Uh, we'll catch him <laughs> up and, and he is going to prepper camp. So I'll see you all there. Yes. Yeah. You guys get on, get your tickets to prepper camp. It's going to be a ball. It's going to be in September. So... Um, make it happen. All right, guys. Until next time, remember, dream. Survive. Survive. Thank you for joining Sarah and Chen for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, Battle for the South, Dark Days in Denver, and The Endless Night at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love the Changing Earth series and podcast, become a supporter while you're there. 